Hello and welcome to this quick guides video on personal statements. My name is Imi and I work for the global recruitment team at the University of Reading as an assistant student recruitment officer. For today's quick guides video we have two aims. First we're going to outline exactly what personal statements are and what admissions tutors are looking for when they read them. This will include a broad overview of the characteristics admissions tutors want to see, as well as some exploration of examples of things you might want to include when writing your own personal statements. Our second aim is to explore how you may want to structure your personal statement. We'll take a broad overview again and then explore paragraph by paragraph a good way to structure the personal statement. In particular, we'll look at the ABC method to structure the individual paragraphs. Along the way, we'll look at some examples of personal statement paragraphs and think about what has been done well and what could be improved. So when you apply to university, you will complete an online application form on the UCAS website and the personal statement is the seventh section of the form. Once you've completed all the sections, your school will add a reference to your application and send it to UCAS. UCAS then processes your application and sends it to the universities you've applied to, who will then consider the applications they've received. So the personal statement is the only section of your application to university that you have full control over. This is your chance to stand out and demonstrate why you want to study your chosen subject. You will send the same personal statement to all the choices on your UCAS application and you will have a maximum of 4,000 characters or 47 lines, whichever one comes first. Personal statements are read by admissions tutors at the university, but it's worth noting there's no spelling or grammar check, there's no formatting on the UCAS website and UCAS will run your personal statement for a similarity detection service to check for plagiarism. Admissions tutors are lecturers and researchers at universities who will have a great deal of expertise and subject knowledge. In a moment, we'll look at some examples of things you might want to include and talk about in your personal statement. Before we do that, though, it's important to reflect on the broader characteristics admissions tutors are looking for. They want somebody who loves the subject they're studying and has done their research into what this might look like at university. But they also want someone who's flexible and can change their opinions based on evidence. They want somebody who's able to apply their subject to the real world or their own experiences, as well as be someone who's fun to teach, reads around the subject and is able to learn reflectively. Fundamentally though, a personal statement is a great opportunity for academics to get to know you as a person. They want to know where your interest in the subject comes from and why you want to study this subject over any other subject. This means it's important to tailor your personal statement specifically to your interests and not feel like you have to make up a grand narrative about what you think the admissions tutors or academics want to hear. There are lots of things you could choose to include in a personal statement. First and foremost, you need to show that you understand the subject you're applying for. This can be an issue particularly for subjects that aren't allied directly to post-16 qualifications, such as real estate, marketing and speech and language therapy, just to name a few. This can also be an issue if you're applying to a subject um, without having necessarily studied at post-16 level, such as business. Therefore, it's important that you research the courses you're applying for thoroughly and make sure you understand what it is you're going to be studying for the next three to four years. You can demonstrate your understanding of an interest in a subject in lots of different ways. It's a good idea to participate in taster days, masterclasses, online courses, anything that shows that you've been exploring the subject beyond what you study at school. When discussing these things, though, it is important that you demonstrate what you're interested in and expand on this using skills such as critical thinking, analysis and relating your experience to wider issues. We'll look a bit more on how to do this later on. If you have any work experience, this can be a great thing to talk about in your personal statement or on your UCAS application. This can be related to your subject or it might not be. Either way, work experience is a great example of the ability to develop and utilise new skills in a new environment. Sometimes work experience is a requirement for some courses, particularly those that are based around people-oriented vocations such as speech and language therapy. So it's worth checking that in the entry requirements for the courses you're applying for. However, when talking about work experience, you will more than likely have a wealth of skills to draw on. So it's important to keep it simple and not to waffle on about all the skills you've gained in your work experience. You're going to hear this throughout this presentation that it's important in personal statements not just to describe and list your experiences, but to comment further on the skills you've gained and analyse how they might be relevant to your course. 
Some things you might want to think about in terms of your work experience is how does it relate to your future career? Did it help you decide on some potential career paths? What skills did you develop and how will these and others help you at university? If you're participating in any university summer schools this year, these can be an excellent thing to discuss on your personal statement. This is because they show direct interest in a subject and that you're willing to learn about it outside of school. Summer schools are also a really good opportunity to work on a project that allows you to develop skills such as project writing, independent study and critical thinking. When discussing these in a personal statement, it can be helpful to use this project and draw examples from it of what you'd like to study further at university. We'll look at this in depth for, with an example in a few more slides. Finally, if you do any extracurricular activities, these can be a useful thing to include in your personal statement. They can be a great way of demonstrating a willingness to increase subject knowledge if they're related to your course, but if they're not, they can still be a valuable example of enthusiasm and dedication. They also demonstrate the ability to organise and manage your time outside of school. If you don't do many extracurricular activities, this summer is a great time to start doing things like reading a little deeper into the subject you want to study at university. Perhaps you might want to explore academic books, journals, studies, and maybe you prefer to access things like TED Talks, podcasts, or open online courses. All of these and others are great ways to develop independent study and higher level thinking. Beyond talking about um, examples of your interest in a course that you're applying for, you may want to include some more personal topics. In the introduction particularly, it's a really good idea to mention something about you in relation to how you became interested in the course. A conclusion is also a good place to mention any future plans, even if it is as broad as I want to pursue per, um, further study at postgraduate level. If you're applying with deferred entry, you could talk about the, your gap year plans, what skills you hope to gain, and if you have any personal achievements that relate well to your course or demonstrate some helpful skills, these can be good things to talk about as well. There are, however, a few things you might want to avoid when writing your personal statement. There are a lot of cliche sentences people tend to use, usually centred around very broad ideas of I've always wanted to, it's always been my dream to, and we'll look at those in a second. As much as it's good to be passionate, it's not enough just to say the word passion or passionate lots of times in your personal statement. You need to demonstrate this through your examples and how you expand on them. Humour and sarcasm is best avoided because whoever reads your personal statement might not share the same sense of humour as you, as are negative comments. As I said at the start, you only have a limited amount of space on your personal statement, so it's best to avoid irrelevant facts and information that are going to take up space. You should not mention specific universities as this is going to be sent to all of the universities you're applying for. And as I said earlier, UCAS will run this through a plagiarism detection service, so all of this work must be your own. So here are some examples of overused sentences in personal statements. You can see that all of these are quite broad and quite long and they take up valuable space without saying a lot. Many of them are also unlikely to be true. As over the past 12 to 13 years of education, it's unlikely that you've always wanted to pursue the same career path or been passionate about the same things. And that's okay. So personal statements are the first piece of written communication that a university are going to read from you and they want students who can communicate well and are academically able to succeed at university. That's why it's really important to have a good structure. This is one example of how you could structure a personal statement. You could start with an introduction where you talk about why you've chosen this subject. You then move on to maybe between two and four main paragraphs where you tell us about your interests and experiences with the subject. And then you summarise with a conclusion where you talk about why you're a great fit for this course and for university. Your introduction paragraph should be quite short, no more than three sentences. And this is where you set the ground running and you talk about what you want to study. You explain at this point as well where your interest in that subject has come from. Some things that can be helpful are sharing personal stories about your interest, being honest about those as well, not coming up with some grand story, just being honest about your interests and avoiding the cliche sentences I mentioned earlier. So here's an example introduction from somebody applying to politics and international relations. Over the last couple of years, I've seen my friends start to repost social media content on topics from election outcomes and human rights to international politics. The arrival of Twitter, Instagram and TikTok has enabled young people to be engaged with global political issues. 
However, many of us lack the knowledge needed to critically assess the things we are reading. Therefore, I want to study politics at university to better understand the world around me. So we can see here this introduction has done a lot of things well. It's only three sentences long, although there are three quite um, broad sentences, very helpful, give us lots of information. They say where the student's interest in the subject has come from by giving an example, and the reader gets to know a bit about what has sparked the student's interest. This would be even better if they talked perhaps about a specific event where um, social media was um, content was shared on political issues rather than talking quite generally as they have done here. So when writing about your experiences in the main paragraphs, you need to expand on these in a meaningful way. It's not enough just to write a list of things you've done. You need to explain why you undertook something and how it is going to benefit you at university. A good way to demonstrate this is by using the ABC method. You may be familiar with similar methods for structuring a paragraph such as PEE, PEEL, making a point, providing evidence, discussing its effect, linking it back to the question and so on. Either way, whatever acronym you use, it's important that you demonstrate understanding of the skills you gain and how these are going to benefit you at university. So let's take a look at this example of an applicant for business. I'm also involved in many other things. I'm a prefect and work with younger students. I am in the school play nearly every year. This year I was Rizzo in the musical Grease. I had a couple of solos to sing and loads of lines. I can prioritise my time. I've attended the business strand of a summer school with the Brilliant Club, which has been very interesting. I work in my local sports centre, which keeps me busy and gives me money to save for uni. I also love to read and socialising with my friends. So this applicant has listed a lot of examples of things they've been involved with. And while it's great they've been able to manage their time and have all these commitments in their lives, there is little expansion here on the skills they've gained and almost no real mention of how this relates to business. Even with where they mentioned the business strand of the Brilliant Club, they have all they've really said is that it's interesting. They haven't really expanded on it. So here we can see some of the things the applicant could expand on. As a starting point, it's best to pick one solid example and expand on it rather than listing lots of different examples. So if we take one activity, the Brilliant Club Summer School, we can look at the benefits, which are the academic skills, independent study, project work, report writing, critical thinking, analysis. Linking it back to the course, they are studying and completing reports independently, which is something they might have to do at university. They can also talk about what they specifically did that project on and how this could be something they're interested in in the future and might want to study at university. So putting this into prose, we could say something like summer 2021, I completed a project on or whatever during a brilliant club summer school. During tutoring sessions, I developed research and critical thinking skills, which I put into practice when writing my project. I motivated myself to complete my project before the end of August to such a high level that I was nominated for the Brilliant Club Project Awards. So here we can see them drawing on another example of how this has been helpful to talk about an award. Researching and writing this project on my own confirmed my interest in business, especially in whatever that area was that they study. As a student, I will often need to complete independent projects, motivating myself and analysing many different sources of information, just like I did for this project, proving my ability to study at university level. So we can see there how they've linked it back to the course. Finally, your conclusion is the place where you confirm you're the right candidate for this course. You might like to look to the future and you might want to maybe mention some skills or modules you're looking forward to. Um, but again, don't mention specific universities. But this is not a time to bring in new examples or activities here. Just like your introduction, you're probably aiming for about three sentences. So it's really not a long paragraph at all. So here's an example of a conclusion paragraph for someone who wants to study psychology. I'm excited by the vast career opportunities a degree in psychology provides. In particular, I'm interested in learning about childhood development. I'm a self-motivated, organised and committed student that possesses the passion to become a successful psychology graduate at your university. So before you send off your personal statement, it's a good idea to have a second pair of eyes read over it. This is to ensure that any spelling errors or missing words are spotted by someone else. You might want to ask people like parents, teachers, other adults in your life who have experience of writing cover letters for jobs to read through it. Your friends can also be helpful because they might know what things you're missing, things that could really add a lot, experiences and so on. 
And finally, it's good to get somebody to read it who doesn't know you very well, as the admissions tutors who will read this won't know you at all. And so you need to make sure that it makes sense to someone reading it for the first time who has no knowledge of you at all. If you're a little bit stuck on where to start, UCAS has a really helpful personal statement tool where you can think about some of your experiences and start structuring it into paragraphs. I hope this has been helpful. That's everything from me and good luck with writing your personal statements.